Hello viewers, it's Thursday July 27th and last night the BBC included a remarkable story in its 10 o'clock news programme. Take a look. Jehovah's Witnesses have been accused of failing the victims of child sex abuse after a case in Manchester where a man who was convicted of sexual assault was allowed to cross-examine his victims. The Charity Commission, which regulates the religious group, said the questioning was inappropriate and demeaning. One victim described the meeting as worse than the court case. An audio recording of the meeting has been passed to our social affairs correspondent, Michael Buchanan. This is New Moston Kingdom Hall in Manchester, where Jonathan Rose spent years as a senior member. In 2013, he was imprisoned for nine months after being convicted of the historical sexual abuse of young girls. Jehovah's Witnesses went to expel him, but Rose appealed, which led to an extraordinary gathering. A meeting was called between eight male elders, a convicted paedophile and his female victims. Over the course of an evening, the women had to recount what had happened to them, while he, Jonathan Rose, got to interrogate them. Each woman was questioned separately. One secretly recorded her grilling by Jonathan Rose. What I'm saying to you is this didn't happen. But give me one reason, one reason please why I would have done it to you. I had no reason to touch you, we were friends. At one point, another man in the room asked the woman, if she'd egged Rose on, and no one prevented him from discussing graphic details. What was I supposed to have done to you that night? Please explain to me. Not to be perverted, was I, what, did I touch you down below? Did I touch your breasts? One victim said she didn't even know Rose was going to be at the Kingdom Hall. She went in the belief the congregation were going to apologise to her with protected identity. He kept making out I was lying. He kept saying, why did I make it up? Why would I say something like that? And at no point did I feel like he was going to admit it. So as soon as I knew he wasn't going to admit it, there was no remorse, no sorry. That's when I felt like I'd had enough. I just got to the point where I thought he genuinely believes he hasn't done anything wrong. Her mother, who supported her, was appalled by what unfolded. I felt guilty because I should have been protecting her. It shouldn't have been allowed. That meeting should not have been allowed, ever. Jehovah's Witnesses say this evening that they've robust child protection policies and put appropriate restrictions on anyone found guilty of sexual abuse. Today's report, however, said their actions in Manchester failed the women. It has to be dealt with in a way that is sensitive to the victims who have gone through this terrible or ordeal, but also in a way uh, that the public would expect this to be dealt with. And in this case, they let the victims down. Though Jonathan Rose was expelled from the Kingdom Hall, the meeting here should clearly not have happened. And the Charity Commission have wider concerns about how Jehovah's Witnesses handle sex abuse allegations and are carrying out a broader inquiry. Michael Buchanan, BBC News, Manchester. So, as you've just seen, the Charity Commission has concluded its statutory inquiry into New Moston Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses, which is in Manchester. The Commission has been investigating the congregation for some time now, and it's fairly reasonable to say that their conclusions were somewhat damning. This is a congregation whose elders allowed a convicted pedophile to interrogate his victims thus compounding the abuse he'd already inflicted on them. Now, if you happen to be a Jehovah's Witness and you're in any doubt as to the thoroughness of this investigation, maybe you wonder whether it was conducted fairly or whether the findings are really as damning as this report makes out, I would encourage you to go to the official government pages which give a full summary of the report. It's actually quite a long report that goes into a lot of detail as to what took place. And what fascinates me as someone who's reasonably familiar with the story, having followed it for quite some time, is the part of the report towards the end where it says, it is the inquiry's view that the charity's trustees did not cooperate openly and transparently with the commission. In particular, they did not provide accurate and complete answers to the Commission regarding the earlier allegation of child sexual abuse 
and the conduct of the misconduct hearing against the former trustee. The inquiry was concerned that the charity trustees did not report a serious incident to the commission. So that's incredible. We're not just talking about a slip-up or a one-off incident in which a group of elders made a serious mistake with devastating ramifications. We're not just talking about negligence and mishandling. We're also talking about the fact that the elders who were responsible failed to cooperate fully with the Charity Commission when it came knocking. And that's a pattern that we see repeatedly when it comes to child abuse whenever Watchtower or representatives of Watchtower are called to account. We saw the same thing happening at the Australian Royal Commission where Watchtower officials were frankly flat out lying in an effort to frustrate the Commission's efforts and refusing to accept responsibility. This is a pattern that's being repeated again and again. Even in Watchtower's response to these Charity Commission findings, they simply can't bring themselves to apologise even though they've been caught red-handed. Aside from the BBC, you have significant exposure with the story being picked up by The Guardian, The Telegraph and The Times, and yet Watchtower can't bring itself to say those magic words, we're sorry, which I'm sure would mean so much to the victims. Instead, we get the same old cookie-cutter response repeated across all the newspapers covering this story, which reads as follows. Jehovah's Witnesses abhor child abuse in all of its forms and do not shield wrongdoers from the authorities or from the consequences of their actions. That, apparently, is all Watchtower can bring itself to say when evidence emerges proving it to be negligent when it comes to dealing with child abuse and protecting victims. Now, I'm not going to go over the whole story in detail because if you want to, you can read about the whole thing in the Charity Commission's report and I'll be sure to include a link in the description below. Instead, I just want to urge you, if you happen to be a Jehovah's Witness watching this video, to please think carefully about what all of this entails. This is supposed to be Jehovah's organisation. This is supposed to be a spiritual paradise in which everyone is treated with love and fairness. And in this situation, we see a clear example, not just of elders being grossly negligent, but also of elders refusing to cooperate when being held to account for their actions. And we see an organisation that absolutely refuses to accept responsibility and issue an apology. You have to ask yourself, in light of these findings, and in light of the findings from the Australian Royal Commission, which you can also access freely online, how could this possibly be an organisation with elevated moral standards that is being used and directed by God. With all that said, I did just want to spend a few minutes addressing former Jehovah's Witnesses, who may be well acquainted with the problems surrounding Jehovah's Witnesses and child abuse, but who may just be a bit confused about the Charity Commission, and who may want to know what, if any, similarity it has with the Australian Royal Commission. So in Australia, you have the Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse. This is essentially a government commission that's been put together to examine various institutions, to look into their policies and practices, to interview victims, to speak to the officials themselves, and to basically find out what problems they have or whether they have problems when it comes to dealing with child abuse. The Charity Commission of England and Wales, on the other hand, is not set up to investigate child sex abuse. It's a regulatory body that reports directly to Parliament and it's tasked with monitoring the thousands of charities in England and Wales and making sure they comply with the applicable laws. Now, as it happens, at the moment, the Charity Commission is conducting a statutory inquiry into Jehovah's Witnesses in the UK, specifically the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain. They are concerned about numerous reports and complaints about child safeguarding, and despite Watchtower's attempts to frustrate the Commission in the courts by getting the inquiry blocked, the Commission is persisting with investigating the organisation and trying to find out what the problem is and what can be done about it. This is where I need to be honest with you. 
and say that while I am delighted that the Charity Commission is at least doing something about Jehovah's Witnesses in the UK, in my opinion they will always be limited in the extent to which they can hold Watchtower to account. Even though there are a number of measures the Charity Commission can take with organisations that are in breach of the relevant standards, it ultimately doesn't have the power to revoke charitable status. Basically, Watchtower can do whatever it likes. It is, after all, a religious organisation that is run not by a board of trustees in the UK, but by a governing body in America who claim to take their orders directly from the Almighty. And by way of giving you some perspective on this, this is a huge problem that affects not just Jehovah's Witnesses, but other religious organisations that are abusive and harmful. For example, there have been cases where mosques that are registered as charities have been involved in radicalising Muslims who then go on to commit acts of terrorism. And the exclusive brethren, like Jehovah's Witnesses, are allowed to get away with breaking up families through shunning while holding on to their charitable status. Basically, the whole system urgently needs to be overhauled, and the Charity Commission needs to be given the power to properly fulfil its mandate by being able to revoke the charitable status of organisations that are quite clearly not charities. Until then, there's really very little they can do, apart from investigate and document cases of abuse. And I honestly applaud the Charity Commission for at least doing that in Watchtower's case, despite, as I mentioned earlier, Watchtower trying to frustrate their efforts through legal action. So that's the Charity Commission, and again, credit to them for investigating Jehovah's Witnesses and at least documenting the abuse that's going on. Entirely separate to the Charity Commission, you have the Independent Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse, or ICSA, which is the UK's equivalent to the Australian Royal Commission. Well, I say it's the equivalent, but in a crucial way, it isn't. You see, the Australian Royal Commission set up an investigation for Jehovah's Witnesses and has so far held two case studies, Case Study 29, and case study 54. In these two case studies, an army of lawyers and legal experts were able to go over the policies and practices of Jehovah's Witnesses with a fine tooth comb and identify areas in which the organisation falls woefully short. The same cannot be said for ICSA, which so far has not included Jehovah's Witnesses in its list of investigations. That's right, as things stand, there will be no UK child abuse investigation for Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, to say I was appalled when I heard of this is a huge understatement. I mean, anyone who understands how rife child abuse is among Jehovah's Witnesses should be gobsmacked that Watchtower isn't being considered. But the good news is that before the inquiry gets underway, those of us who care deeply about this issue can put pressure on ICSA to have a rethink regarding Jehovah's Witnesses and consider including Watchtower in their investigations. However, I cannot stress enough, this is not going to happen all by itself. In fact, if you're watching this several years from now, the chances are that it never happened at all and ICSA just went ahead without looking at Jehovah's Witnesses. Bottom line, we cannot afford to be complacent and just assume that everything will magically work out the way it did in Australia. That's why, if you feel the same way I do, and especially if you're from the UK, you should absolutely contact ICSA. Email them, phone them, tag them in a tweet, do whatever you can to urge them to reevaluate their decision and make sure Watchtower gets the scrutiny it deserves. And quite frankly, in light of everything we now know about Jehovah's Witnesses and child abuse, not just from the Australian Royal Commission, but also now from the Charity Commission and its investigation into New Moston Congregation, ICSA really has no excuse for such an appalling oversight. But with all that said, I'm afraid that's all I've got time for. 
Before I go, I just want to say that if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, I can completely understand if all of this is very overwhelming and very difficult to take in. But I promise you, this is not apostate lies. This is not some kind of elaborate conspiracy from Satan. There really is a problem with child abuse among Jehovah's Witnesses, and you owe it to yourself to do the research and find out more. Better to get the bad news now than to spend the rest of your life serving an organisation that is entirely undeserving of your loyalty. I'm Lloyd Evans and you've been watching my John Cedars channel. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos and, as always, thank you for watching.